In the previous module, we talked about transportation impacts on safety, impacts on mobility. Now we want to focus in a little bit more on transportation impacts on energy use and emissions. If you look at the total amount that transportation contributes in terms of both energy use as well as greenhouse gases, it's been pretty well known that here in the United States, it's roughly anywhere from 28 to 30 percent, where uh, if you look at the total pie, that's a pretty significant fraction that comes strictly from transportation. Uh, a lot of it still comes from uh, uh, industry, a lot of it comes from electricity generation, but still uh, a significant amount comes from transportation, and that's really what we want to reduce. Um, it's also important to understand, too, that when we talk about emissions, we talk about greenhouse gas emissions, but also criteria pollutant emissions, the, the pollution that we often see in our air and that causes us potential health problems and, and potential deaths. Um, in fact, there's been some studies that have shown that if you look at the health effects of these criteria pollutants that come from vehicles, some say it's even higher than what we see from the deaths on the roadway. So, uh, some studies have estimated somewhere upwards of 50,000 people die every year due to these uh, transportation emissions. Um, so it's an important part that we still need to solve and uh, it should be considered just as important when we talk about safety on the roadway. In terms of air quality, I'm showing two pictures here, one that was taken back in the early 1970s and then one that's been taken uh, more recently uh, uh, in the recent years. And this is really the same place, but you can see the difference in, in air quality. And the graph on the bottom is essentially showing the number of bad air quality days that we've had typically year by year. So in the 1970s and early 1980s, we were upwards of 200 days per year we had very bad air quality days. But then you can see a major inflection that took place right around 1989, 1990. And it's been steadily going down ever since. And so uh, we are making pretty significant prog uh, progress in terms of improving our air quality, particularly in how it relates to transportation. The major reason for that happening is due to the cars themselves. Uh, in this graph here, we didn't in the past regulate very carefully the emissions that come out of the tailpipe. Uh, so if you go back to the 1960s, early 1970s, there were no regulations. And then when we started putting in regulations about how many grams of, of pollutant is emitted per mile, uh, then the vehicle started to be cleaned up. A major part of this was the catalytic converter and the emission control systems that have really made significant differences in terms of the pollutants that come out of the vehicle. Uh, so if you look from 1966 all the way down to recent uh, vehicles, it's roughly three orders of magnitude, a thousand times cleaner in terms of the amount of pollutants that come out of those vehicles. So that's been a pretty significant uh, improvement, significant accomplishment. And there's still uh, um, in, uh, more and more cleaner vehicles that are coming out today. Um, we've made a lot of progress on the light duty vehicle side, but we certainly need to make more improvements on the heavy duty side with the trucks, uh, the trains, and even ship emissions. And those type of regulations are going into place. So we are slowly on a vehicle, ship, train, and truck point of view, consistently reducing those emissions every day. So I want to also then talk about traffic as a whole. So we talked about the actual vehicles uh, in terms of their emissions, but let's look at traffic as a whole. And this is a little bit of a complicated graph, but what we're trying to show is how do emissions change with the average speed of traffic on the road? Uh, and what you would expect is that when things are very congested, you're going to have higher emissions, and then you have a middle section where uh, traffic is moving at moderate speeds and, and with that emissions are, are lower. But then even when you go at much higher speeds, they tend to creep up there at the very end. And so a lot of work has gone into looking at very specific trips over many, many vehicles, many, many trips. The emissions have been calculated and you get these curves that we see there on the bottom with that sort of parabolic U-shape. And that's what we want to look at when we want to try to solve traffic related emissions. So if you look at traffic emissions as a function of average speed, what we saw from the data is that uh, traffic generally tends to follow the blue line that you see there near the top. And again, this is a U-shaped parabolic curve. And again, it shows that at slower speeds, things are congested, therefore the emissions are typically higher. 
you have this sort of sweet spot in the middle, and then as you go to much, much higher speeds, you have aerodynamic uh, drag effects that cause uh, higher loads and therefore higher emissions. It's a little bit hard to see, but there's also a dashed red line there. The dashed red line represents the best possible case at that speed if you were driving perfectly smoothly. So we have, as we know, on the roads a lot of stop and go activity, but if you got rid of the stop and go and traveled exactly at that speed, that's what the red line represents. And the reason we show that is when we tackle transportation-related emissions or traffic-related emissions, there's different things we can do. Um, things like congestion mitigation strategies. What we try to do there is take traffic, reduce congestion so that we can go away from those lower speeds and make a move faster where we can get into that lower regime of emissions. There's also speed management strategies. So when we are up at those much higher speeds, you know, we don't always want to travel that fast. We want to reduce it and then have some kind of management where it's typically in the 65, 70 mile an hour range. And then the third way is the traffic flow smoothing strategies. And that's where you smooth out the flow, you get rid of that stop and go, and that's really just driving the traffic from that blue line down to the red line.